Sydney battle off the Ryukyu, now entering its sixth week, a great circus fleet comes under constant attack by a large land-based air fleet for the first time in history. As we close in on the Empire, the enemy lashes out from home airfields with increasing fury. In desperation, the Jap resorts to suicide attacks. The high command now employs the suicide attack as standard operating procedure. Facing sure death, the Jap plunges through curtains of fire. The Banzai boys are inflicting damage, but they do not stop us. This is the crucial test of our naval air power and of our naval gunnery. Our gunners are taking a heavy toll of Jap planes and pilots. We're holding our own, and better. F4U comes in for a landing and gets out of control. After the pilot is safely removed, the fire is extinguished. A task group operating against submarines west of the Cape Verde Islands is to make naval history this day. For its war patrol results in the first American boarding and capture of an enemy vessel in more than a century. The group, consisting of a baby flat top, the USS Guadalcanal, and five destroyer escorts, makes a sound contact. The carrier veers off as the DEs close in and drop depth charges. Wildcat fighters of the carrier patrol sight the target 60 feet below the surface. They fire at the water, indicating the sub's position. Depth charges force the German craft to the surface. 
planes and ships of the task force open up on the exposed U-boat with light anti-personnel ammunition. Caught in a sudden barrage of withering fire, the submarine's crew makes a frantic last-minute attempt to scuttle, which later proves to be ineffective. significant moment in maritime warfare. Not since 1815 has the command away boarders been heard in the United States Navy. The boarding party shoves off to take over the badly mauled U-boat. Another victorious phase in the unremitting sub-hunt, which since 1941 has covered 30 million square miles of ocean and subdued a fleet of 450 enemy submarines. Aboard the sub, it is discovered that the Nazis have attempted to scuttle by opening the ports but quick action prevents flooding and sinking. The U-boat crew is brought aboard. The German captain is among the captured, having been blown over the side of his craft by shell fire as he reached the conning tower. A salvage party aboard the underseas raider reduces the effect of the scuttling damage by taking out all movable weights, repairing the pumps, and blowing out the tanks. Captain Dan Gallery of the Guadalcanal has succeeded in his planned intention not to sink the sub, but to board and bring her back alive. The USS Guadalcanal heads for home, towing the captured sub. The Mediterranean. Mass submission begins as another sub strikes its color. Despite the vast enemy underseas fleet, the Navy, up to VE Day, had escorted 17,000 ships across the Atlantic. New York. In ports in the western Atlantic, there were now at least seven captive U-boats, 36 on both sides of the Atlantic. The coast of Maine. A U-boat operating off the east coast surrenders. Allied forces expect to continue their patrol until all enemy submarines remaining in operation are accounted for. By VE Day, the Navy had 126 sure submarine kills and numerous probables. The Wolf Pack is brought to bay. The Battle of the Atlantic is won. A cessation of hostilities is arranged under the unconditional surrender signed by two German officers in civilian clothes. The United States, Britain, and Russia are represented, headed by Lieutenant General W.D. Morgan, Marshal Alexander's Chief of Staff. The terms call for the immediate immobilization and disarmament of the enemy's ground, sea, and air forces in northern Italy and parts of Austria. The German Lieutenant Colonel signs on behalf of Colonel General Heinrich von Fiedinghoff Scheel, Nazi Commander-in-Chief. The event takes place in the former summer palace of the Neapolitan kings in Caserta. Surrender on 4th May of German forces in Holland, northwest Germany, and Denmark. At 21st Army Group headquarters south of Hamburg, the terms are read by Field Marshal Montgomery. The German command agrees to the surrender of all, all German armed forces in Holland, in northwest Germany, including the Frisian Islands and Heligoland and all other islands, in Schleswig-Holstein and in Denmark, to the Commander-in-Chief, 21st Army Group. This to include all naval ships in these areas. These forces to lay down their arms and to surrender unconditionally. The arrival at advanced Supreme Headquarters in Reims, France, of the Nazi surrender delegates. Colonel General Gustav Jodl, Chief of Staff of the Dissolving German Army, and Naval Commander General Admiral Hans Georg von Friedeborg. They are accompanied by General Jodl's aide, Major Willem Oxenius. Final details of the capitulation are arranged inside a former French schoolhouse in the presence of American, Russian, British, and French representatives. The articles of surrender involve all land, sea, and air forces which have not previously capitulated. The enemy agrees to turn over all ships and aircraft undamaged and unscuttled 
and assures compliance with all orders subsequently to be given him by the Allies. General Yodel signs the surrender at 0241 hours. In Berlin, General Karl A. Spatz and Air Chief Marshal Tedder arrive for the formal ratification of Germany's unconditional surrender. The document is more or less identical with the surrender papers signed at Reims. The arrival of the German representatives, Field Marshal General Willem Keitel, Colonel General Paul Stump, and Admiral von Friedeborg. They enter the meeting room shortly after midnight. When they are seated, a translation of the unconditional surrender terms is read, and Keitel states that he is prepared to sign. In January 1943, the late President Roosevelt and Premier Churchill met in Casablanca. There they pronounced the formula of unconditional surrender for the Axis powers. In Europe, that formula has now been fulfilled. The Allied force, which invaded Europe on June 6, 1944, has, with his great Russian allies and forces advancing from the south, utterly defeated the Germans by land, sea, and air. This unconditional surrender has been achieved by teamwork. Teamwork not only among all the allies participating, but among all the services, land, sea, and air. USS Franklin steams toward Japan, launching aircraft for a dawn attack on Kyushu. At 0707, the 27,000 ton carrier is 60 miles off the Jap mainland. Out of a low overcast, a Jap plane barrels in toward the Franklin, sweeping the length of her flight deck. The direct hits of two 500 pound bombs turn the carrier into a raging inferno. and smoke shoots skyward as Hellcats and Corsairs loaded with gas, bombs and rockets begin to explode. corpsmen attend to the growing number of casualties as others go below to rescue men trapped below decks. From the screen of destroyers and cruisers, ships begin to rush to the aid of the stricken carrier. Again, the carrier trembles under the impact of the explosions. Clouds of burning gasoline, pierced by ignited rockets, leap into the air. Commander O'Callaghan, senior chaplain aboard the Franklin, administers last rites to a man on the flight deck. For the third time, the ship is rocked by explosions. Cruiser Santa Fe comes alongside to help subdue the fires. The pockmarked and smoking flight deck of the carrier is a mass of twisted metal. Nosing in at the stern of the Franklin, a second destroyer, the Hickok, attempts to put out the fire still raging on the hangar deck.
wounded men trapped on the fantail are removed. Others make their escape by jumping to the pitching deck of the destroyer. Some miss the deck and plunge into the water. Others escape by a net thrown over the side. Many men are blown overboard by the explosions and are picked up by nearby cruisers and destroyers. By noon of the second day, the Franklin is able to proceed under her own power. The trip back takes 38 days, covers over 13,000 miles. Ulithi, Pearl Harbor, through the Panama Canal, and at last New York City, where the charred and shattered ship is placed in the Brooklyn Navy Yard for repairs.